Writing has always been a fundamental part of our culture and communication in Zimbabwe. We've witnessed some of the most outstanding writers come out of this, our beautiful nation. With mind plus such as Dambu Zomarechera, mm. Yvonne Vera, searching for her name, mm. Felix Moyo, Raisden Bayer, Patissa Nyati, the list is endless. It is really indeed endless. Writers influence the minds, they shape the society, and also they shape the thinking of some of the most outstanding human developments. It is the least expensive thing to do, as you only need a pen and paper, mm. and yet it remains as one of the most unpopular professions in our country. And of late, the writer's pen seemed to have run dry off its ink with some of the writings we read in our press, in our publications, in our productions, and also in our modern writings, etc. And yet, a people's writing can say a lot about who they are. So who are we? Simoba and Itina. And what makes us who we are? Mm -hmm. For that and more, please join us as we journey through these ideas that make this continent move and also talk to the individuals that practice them. Yes, please join us as we preserve that essence, Yoguba, that we as Africans have to share. My name is Mboma Hawks. I am the Global Citizen and my name is Gilmore T. And you are watching Tatawen. In this episode, we speak to two people who have been at the center of writing in Zimbabwe. And what's amazing about our guests is they practice on different levels, and yet their work and influence is equally effective. With one being one of the biggest publishers from Zimbabwe, and the other being a self-published poet who has broken records and himself shiny things and also gained respect in the community of writing. Both having a commonality, the love for literature and writing, expression and communication through written word. And later on in the show, we're going to speak to a journalist, mm -hmm. a poet, an avid reader on the importance of writing and the value it has to the community. Is writing worth pursuing? How does modern writing affect them? And what era of writing are they into? And of course, we round off with my favorite one, of course, what grinds my gears, where we discuss the social ills and swan wutigante, singatanjani, in nazo in our society. But first, we have Amma Books publisher Jane Morris. She's a publisher and editor who has given voice to a whole lot of writers from Bulawayo and Zimbabwe, and also put out works such as Dancing with Life by Christopher Mulalazi, and a whole lot more. And of course, Pelani Nyoni, who is a self-published poet who broke William Shakespeare's record by writing and publishing 400 sonnets. He's also an amazing slim poet and spoken word artist. He's also an actor. Talk about multi-talented. <laughs> Pilani and Jane, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Yeah. Pilani, are you happy to be here? Yeah, I, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your trade. As people that earn a living off selling books, I mean, how is it, um, the industry? Things are a bit slow at the moment. Mm. I think um, with most businesses, the economy is not doing so well at the moment. Mm. So we're finding that outlets for books, for instance, there aren't as many outlets mm. and people just don't have the disposable income. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there is also the people, what they choose to spend their money on. Sometimes they prefer to go out and buy chicken and chips <laughs> as opposed to a book. Yeah. We prefer them to uh, buy a book. A book is for life. Mm. Chicken and chips is for 10 minutes. Yeah. For 10 minutes and then after that you're done. But then there's also the issue of technology. Uh, it has come in and it is, you find that there's an e-books right now. How has mm. that affected it or has it promoted anything at all? I, I think the internet is basically killing everything. Ah. It's, it's, uh, take for example, as a publisher, some of the work that Jane does is editing and uh, typesetting. Mm -hmm. Now guys can simply download uh, uh, templates off the internet. Mm -hmm. You can simply do that on your computer. You can edit and all that. And it's, it's also easier now to, to steal books. Oh, yeah. I don't have to, oh, to, to go out and, and buy a book anymore. I just go out and search for, for a PDF version of it. Mm -hmm. And 
So I'm, I'm not really keen on, on the whole ebook revolution. But doesn't it come as an advantage? Because you know, you find that a lot of people are on their phones, a lot of people are on their iPads, on their mm. computers. Doesn't mm. it come as an advantage for you guys? Have you tried to read a book on your phone? It's difficult. Yeah. But there's some people that prefer that. We can't run away from that. Yeah. So I think on your phone, I, I think recent um, research has shown that people do find it a more satisfactory experience actually reading a real book. I do. And some of the figures, certainly from the UK, are now showing that less and less people are using Kindles and other e-readers mm. and are reverting to, to the hard copies. Yeah. And I think the retention, if you read something um, online or an e-reader, you don't tend to retain it in the same way. Mm. I, I think you forget. I know certainly for myself, if I read something on an e-reader, I, I tend to forget it much more quickly. Whereas if I have a hard copy, I think part of it is that with a hard copy, you open it, you have the cover, mm. and it's just what I think is a more satisfactory experience. It is. It's, it's an emotional experience, holding a book, owning mm. a book, and just basically having it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's talk about writing. I mean, do you, do you think that the old times of the Marichelles, the Ferras have passed because, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on right now with new writers coming up. Uh, do we still have that kind of writing existing right now? Personally, I think we do. I think we have very good writers around. Mm. I mean, we have Polani sitting, oh, sitting here. <laughs> uh, we have, um, we um, not too long ago, published a book by Tendai Huchu, mm. a very good writer. Mm. We have Novaila Ploayo. Mm. We have Bettina Gapa. Mm. So I think there are uh, writers of real stature mm -hmm. from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should bemoan the fact. I, I, I really think we should celebrate the fact that there are good writers out there. Uh, but personally, I've read some books like Chimamanda, Tendai mm. Huchu, mm. but I always feel like uh, those just a few that I've read, and then uh, I still feel there's something I miss. Mm. Or maybe it's just me. What do you think you miss? What I miss um, is I feel sometimes there's the stories. I can't relate to some of the books that I read. Like you find that you pick up a book and then when you read it, you, I can't relate to it. I don't see myself in the book. Yet it's a book talking about a person from Lai, a person from Zimbabwe. Mm. So I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but mm. you are a publisher. Mm. I, have you not come across such when you're working? Well, I think it's uh, the, the phrase would be horses for courses. Mm. Not everything appeals to everybody. So what you might find that you can't relate to or isn't the sort of literature that you like, mm. I might find very satisfying. Um, and I think the important thing is that we should recognise that there are lots of forms of writing out there. Mm. There's genre writing. Mm. So you have science fiction, you have romance, you have all those different things, fantasy. And there's what, what I describe as literary fiction, right. which is what I tend to prefer. Okay. Um, so I think you have to read widely and decide, find out what you like, what I like. and then and then read that. Would you agree, Plani, that that's... How do you do yeah. it? How do you find what you like to read? Only what you write, actually, also. I... Yeah, that's... A <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's quite a stinger there. I have my own set of books, the type of books that I like. Mm. And it's very hard for me to, to actually sit down and, and find a book that I like. But once in a while, something comes along. I recently ran into Branch Kwava's uh, Harare North. Yes. And I'm going to read it three times at least, mm. you know. Mm. And, but, but they're very far in between. Sometimes it's just, especially when you're close to the source, like mm. you're talking about Blawayo and that, your, your experiences may vary. Sometimes mm. you find that the author has perhaps left the country and has been out of the country for five, ten years. Mm. And your, your reality and their reality is, is no longer it's the same, different. right? Mm. So what you're experiencing might not be what they experience and what mm. they, they're putting across. And I, I believe all, all, all types of writing are, are propaganda. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything objective in writing. So sometimes someone might write something with the intention to, to portray a certain view. All right, all right. Which is right. not what, what you agree with. Okay. Right? Mm. So we can be talk about that teacup over there and you sing the inside and I'm seeing the outside. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about the reading culture in Zimbabwe. Has it grown or does it need more saving? I think the reading culture has possibly changed. Mm. Um, as you said earlier, people are now reading um, not so much maybe hard copy books. They, they're reading on their phones mm. or they, they're reading online. 
Uh, I think it's it's a difficult thing saying that reading culture is dying. And I, I think we have a big responsibility, all of us, to try to encourage a reading culture. Right. And that there are lots of things we can do. Um, and, and people do say there aren't any books available. I mean, we do have libraries mm. here. And I, although I think one of the problems with some of the libraries is that the literature they have there isn't that current. And yeah. a lot of the stuff is old. Mm. And that maybe turns maybe. young people off. It does, it does. Because, you know. Because talking about libraries, I don't even remember the last time I've been in a library. Where do you sell your books, actually? Um, anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bookshops, we, we, we stock bookshops as much as possible hmm. to, to, to the best of our capacity, you know, what we can manage. And wherever I go, I, I do a lot of spoken word as well, a lot of right. physical stuff. Mm -hmm. So whenever I, I do something, I also have my books on the side, right? mm -hmm. yeah, so I can sell. And yeah, we just keep going like that. Uh, a lot of things that we read in the newspapers um, insult the intelligence of us, the readers. Mm -hmm. A lot of tabloids. We have so much about false prophets, uh, goblins, etc. Mm -hmm. Have we run out of things to to talk or to say about mm -hmm. ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, um, sometimes people describe it as a dumbing down culture and it's not just Zimbabwe, certainly. Mm. I think it's, it's across the world. And I, I think it is very sad. Um, the sad. One of the saddest things is, I guess, that it seems to sell newspapers. Mm. <laughs> people do read it. Whether people believe it or not, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Pilani? <laughs> I, I agree with Shane. That it's, it, it may be part of that whole dumbing down process mm -hmm. and also in a way a ploy to, to sell newspapers. The age of mass media is dying mm -hmm. rapidly. By the time, say something that we should know mm -hmm. happens, by the time you know, the paper goes to print, it's, it's already circulating on social media. Mm -hmm. right? but, but now you, you take those rare stories, the, the, the goblin stories, it sells. You, you put that, you pack it that in the newspaper, you still have to sell that advertising space, you still need the circulation. So you, you want to sell something that someone is not going to circulate on the internet or a story that hasn't broken mm -hmm. on the internet. So does it mean that we're going to see start writing about uh, goblins and false prophets? No, and no, like that? no. I'm, I'm a purist. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what sells it. That's what people want to yeah. read. So maybe you might also yeah. want to move in with the time. Uh, I think pe people write for different reasons. Mm. Mm. I, I, sure, I, I appreciate the, the, the money when it's there. And, but I wouldn't go out of my way specifically to, you know, write for, for the money. Mm. It's mm. Would you feel that that was prostituting mm. your art? Yes, uh, I do. I, I, I do feel like that. Yes. It's, mm. I don't know, there are a lot of things we could be doing for money. You know? mm. I think that's the, the, I think you're really right. There are different kinds of writers. Some people might just decide that what they want to do is be a commercial writer mm -hmm. and try to make money. Mm -hmm. Though that's very tough. There aren't many writers mm -hmm. anywhere that, that make a living from their writing. But there are other writers who write what they want. They hope it will sell. Mm -hmm. And I think you fall into that category. Mm -hmm. I, I like to think of that. It's a very romantic notion. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you have gone edge because, as you say, you're also a performance poet, so mm. you, you do. And I think nowadays writers sometimes do have to think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, a lot more is expected of writers mm. than, than in the old days. Sure. In the old days, maybe they could get away with hiding in their garret and just writing, <laughs> and, whereas nowadays publishers want them to have um, an internet presence, a yeah, blog, obviously. and, yeah. and you know, they want them to go to festivals, mm. they want them to to do interviews. Mm. So things are getting quite tough in that sense for yeah, writers. Yeah. And if you're quite a shy, retiring type mm. of writer, it must be hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's okay for you because you're not shy and retiring. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we have to suffer maybe, TV maybe. now. <laughs> this is why you're sitting through now. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> right, we'll be back with more on Tata. Please don't you go anyway. <laughs> Welcome back, and we're still here with Jane Morris and Pilani Nyoni, incredible individuals. We're not going anywhere. For <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> how are you as a writer able to meet uh, the needs of the consumer? I'm a consumer. How are you meeting my needs? What value are you adding to me? I think, first of all, by being honest with myself, my work, and my environment. Mm -hmm. it's, so so if, if I can be me in my environment, mm -hmm. 
you would probably relate to, to that. I'm not trying to be someone else. I'm not trying to, 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 to give you a false impression of, of what I'm... I'm actually writing from the heart. It's at times catharsis, right? I'm, I'm actually... These pent-up emotions that I have about everything that's going on around me, mm -hmm. I'm writing that, and you read that, you can relate to it. But is it always about you sometimes also? No, sometimes it's not about me. Sometimes I, I hear a story from someone, All right. and I think it, it resonates with something inside mm -hmm. me. You know, there's that instinct, mm -hmm. I think the same thing that uh, a publisher feels, and then they say, you know what, this is a good book. I'm going to work on this yes, book. Yes, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I was talking about this yesterday with my husband um, about the kinds of, of books I like. Mm -hmm. And the, the kind of books I really like are the ones that really grab my emotions, yes. that, you know, I feel something mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. whether it's... It upsets me or, or, you know, I find it funny uh -huh. because at the end of the day, I think there are a limited number of subjects that, that writers can work with. I mean, there's yeah. the big ones, aren't there? The loss, death, love, uh -huh. they, they, you know, so there's nothing new in the world in that yes. sense. I mean, have you just donated a book only or is it a box of books also? I've donated books. Books is in one, two, three, in different libraries. He's trying to pin you down here. Yeah. This is very unfair. I, I can see, I can see. He's a struggling writer. <laughs> no, but then at the same time, you need to take your, your works out to the people. Yes, um, and, and I'm a modest man. You know, I'm trying not to. Uh, but, but what I did is, when I did my first book, Once a Love, Always a Fool, mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a provision. Every time I sold so many copies, mm -hmm. I'd take, take, take some, some books and uh, donate them. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I go on social media and mm -hmm. I say, hey, listen, mm -hmm. library in your community, mm -hmm. just tell me where. Mm -hmm. And someone will give me a name mm -hmm. and I say, okay, good. we're going to get a book there. Mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd, I take, took a big box of books to the Blue Public Library. Okay. And I say, guys, these are the books. Went to Mzidigazi and they All distributed right. in, in, in every library in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I could do with, uh, you, you know, tried. With, with, with the little I have. You yeah. tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, on that issue, let's talk about expectations of the outside expectations about African literature. I mean, uh, who is the African writer? It's <laughs> 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 actually a very interesting question because there has been a lot um, discussed recently about African writers. Mm -hmm. And it seems to pertain only to African writers because when you talk about the expectation, mm -hmm. there are expectations coming from outside Africa. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And one of them, people describe it as poverty porn. Yep. Expectations that, that African writers will write about wars, mm -hmm. about farming, about you know starving children. Um, not the full picture of Africa, what, right. what, what Africa awesome. is. And so there's been... Um, Writers have been coming back, haven't they, and saying, mm -hmm. well, actually, <laughs> we'll write what we want because mm -hmm. there's African writers who want to write romance, mm -hmm. want to write fantasy, want to write science fiction. But do we have romance in Africa? You see, that's another thing. Do we have that romance in Africa? You don't have romance in your life. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be personal here, yeah, guys. <laughs> oh, I'll find you a nice girl. I, find I know one. <laughs> Uh, coming back to the topic, I I'd like to play the, the devil's advocate. Mm. Uh, th there are all these expectations. I think it becomes treasonous when, when someone else is asking you to do this. Mm. But at the end of the day, these are our stories, right? Mm. This, this is what's actually happening. Unless we face reality, mm. we cannot move away from these doldrums that we're in, mm -hmm. largely in. So some, those stories have to be written. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of trauma out there, a lot of untold stories. Mm. You know, mm. Black men don't mm. cry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but we can cry on paper. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. We can actually tell these things. And also for posterity. We don't mm -hmm. want guys in the, in, in the past thinking they're messing up. Uh, and we we'll think of us as this golden age of... Oh, I, I, I agree totally. People shouldn't be dictating to the writer oh, yeah. that you must yeah. write yeah. about this yeah. particular image of Africa. Mm -hmm. Writers should be allowed to, if they want to write romances, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. I totally yeah. agree with you, Polanyi, yeah. that we shouldn't ignore the real issues yeah. because what writers do is reflect the society in which they live. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. clearly yeah. they're going to be um, talking about the issues mm. that pertain to us here, today, now. Yeah. I think writing is the beginning of everything because through writing we are able to preserve knowledge and information. Sadly, our mm. own local writers are hard to find, even in local bookshops. Maybe we do not value the importance of having these books in our stores, or us as the people, we also do not own the bookstores. And those that own the bookstores, they don't see the value of having these books in their stores. 
Or maybe the other thing is because our phones have taken over, Ooh. you know, we're constantly, nobody's interested in reading books like yeah. back in the day. Yeah, but also books don't give us Wi-Fi. That's why we're always on our phones. <laughs> but it's always nice to pick a book. It takes you into someone else's life, someone else's path, and yeah. then you get to know about who they are and other places also. However, I would like to applaud people like Jane Morris who continue, regardless of the circumstances, who continue to publish local writers and Upilani, yes. who continues to preserve art amongst other people, of course. And that's important. Seriously, amazing. So from us, it's at our winners, Tando Wuti. Tata You will notice they, they, there are no uh, book clubs, especially for Kawaii. Mm -hmm. Now, rather, they might have one or two that are active, but Kawaii is none. I've been searching on Twitter, Facebook, and no one has been responsive in terms of uh, who have a book club. Yeah. The culture, it's not dead, but it has not really grown from back then. When we used to read more than kids do nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's actually tragic because this day with social media, someone will just write a Facebook post, they'll use shorthand, they want to punctuate, and they'll put something like that out to the world. So I believe you should respect writing. It's, it's an art form, fine, we all have the alphabet, we all have QWERTY keyboards, but when you're going to write something that people are going to read, at least write it well. Or just don't write at all, don't abuse us with your terrible writing on social media. Uh, I think we have lost interest in reading per se. We have all been taken up with uh, we read Twitter yeah. <laughs> and then Facebook. When it comes to the really hard book of reading, we seem to have been gone off to check a bit. The good thing about uh, technology is that right now you can go and read all of the poems by Maya Angelou. You can go online and download some of the best literature of our time, if enough time's passed. So there's access, and access is very good. It's cheaper than buying an actual book. I'm not saying be a pirate. I'm saying now there's there's so much knowledge, and it's just at the touch of your fingertips. So I, I think we, we should go and get that. Technology has broadened the inventory, but it hasn't necessarily helped uh, people read more. Back in the day, you were to write a piece and you had to struggle to get an audience for it. Nowadays, you can you can do a short poem, put it on Twitter. If it's long enough, you can put it on Facebook, you can, you can blog about it. To be honest, there's a gap. There are so many stories. There's There was a time when there was a drought in Mad South and there was only one story about the drought, 50 stories about whose small house did what and which goblin did what. So I think as a society, uh, priorities are in the wrong place. If the only thing you care about is, there'll always be a goblin. These stories are 50 years old, but there are stories that are happening right now to real people that matter, I think, more than goblins. Uh, I'd like to see those stories coming out more. You'll be surprised to learn that people love sensationalism. You know, that's what people like to read. You have a story on page one, something serious, you know, there are Arabs that is talking about money and, you know, SMEs getting some loans and then there's a, a guy who raped somebody and infected them with this and that. You'll find that the story where it's more of a human interest film has got more hits than this, you know, what you would think is a more serious story. So people actually want to tell my what we what write. Newspapers are a business, so what you want to do is to push them. This is what pushes them. People won't remember you for a meme. People won't remember you for a goblin story. And I'd like to believe a lot of writers out there want to be remembered. So if you're going to write, I'm not saying there's a certain prescription for topics to write, but whatever you write, make sure it means something. And don't waste the reader's time. Data is expensive. So when we buy data, at least give us something worthwhile to read. That's what I believe. What Grinds My Gears is a segment where we address social ills that are created by us as individuals in our society and how we can help each other curb those uh, social ills. 
Hi, um, my name is Manda Timlojwa, and what grind my gears is the fact that being a yellow boy, we get this unnecessary attention on the boy. And sometimes it just disrespects the other girls who are not yellow bonds because you're working with your friend and then the boys start whistling, they start saying stuff about yellow bonds. And in a way, I feel like it's, it, it reduces the confidence of that other friend that I'm working with. So I really think that that's a problem that probably doesn't only um, annoy Mandate but a lot of other people out there. Hi to you all. Uh, my name is Jolanda. I am a very well-built woman, and society struggles to accept me for who I am. The name callings, Dula, here we are Kulu, nearly jealous in this name, Awu Peli. And all I can say is I wish people would actually get to know me and understand why I'm big. Is it because I've got diabetes or whatever the disease is? But I would appreciate if people would just stop staring why my battalion to him to win is interesting in Jenga at the, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. We want to know, do you hear me? Do you see me? So the grinding that really annoys me is the name calling and the staring. Alright, so what grinds my gears? Um, I want to talk about this mom. Like, oh mama, they are the people like, who take care of us. So, I mean, uh, I'm definitely offended. So my mom, whom I'm now in Gaza, or my girlfriend, I can bend down all our and just land at you and kill you because oh mama, I like the world to us. Like. Join in the conversation and let us know what grinds your gears. We'd like to thank you at home for joining us on this episode of Tata When I Love to our team, the amazing team that also grinds our gear sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody that kept supporting this show and making the magic happen. So please do follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know the drill. Just Tatawena. Hashtag Tatawena. I am the handles are just we appreciate you for making Tata Wena happen. My name is Boma Hawks. My name is Gil Morty, the Global Citizen. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next week, enjoy the rest of your viewing. Keep watching Tata Wena.